Welcome to the appendix, where we read the primary sources of the past so the present can be better understood. Today's primary source, the Annapolis Convention. Proceedings of the Commissioners to Remedy Defects of the Federal Government. Annapolis in the State of Maryland, September 14, 1786. Found in Documents Illustrative of the Formation of the Union of the American States, page 39. Dissatisfaction with the Articles of Confederation had been growing ever since their ratification. The inability of the government of the Confederation to conclude commercial treaties with foreign nations, the mounting financial and currency difficulties, and the apparent impossibility of amending the Articles by ordinary process, all led to a demand for a drastic revision of the Articles of Confederation. The immediate impulse for the Annapolis Convention came from a group of men who wished to open up navigation on the Potomac. In 1785, Washington invited the commissioners of Virginia and Maryland to meet at Mount Vernon and discuss the problem of communication between the East and the West. These commissioners drew up resolutions asking the cooperation of Pennsylvania in the project. Acting upon this suggestion, Madison pushed through the legislature of Virginia a resolution appointing a commission to meet with other commissioners to take into consideration the State of the Union. These commissioners met at Annapolis the first Monday in September 1786. To the Honorable, the legislatures of Virginia, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. The commissioners from the said states, respectively, assembled at Annapolis, humbly beg leave to report that pursuant to their several appointments, they met at Annapolis in the state of Maryland on the 11th day of September instant and have proceeded to a communication of their powers, they found that the state of New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia had in substance and nearly in the same terms authorized their respective commissioners to meet such other commissioners as were or might be appointed by other states in the Union at such time and place as should be agreed upon by the said commissioners to take into consideration the trade and commerce of the United States, to consider how far a uniform system in their commercial intercourse and regulations might be necessary to their common interest and permanent harmony, and to report to the several states such an act, relative to this great object, as when unanimously ratified by them would enable the United States in Congress assembled effectually to provide for the same. That the state of New Jersey had enlarged the object of their appointment, empowering their commissioners to consider how far a uniform system in their commercial regulations and other important matters might be necessary to the common interest and permanent harmony of the several states, and to report such an act on the subject as when ratified by them would enable the United States in Congress assembled effectually to provide for the exigencies of the Union. That the appointment of commissioners have also been made by the states of New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and North Carolina, none of whom, however, have attended, but that no information has been received by your commissioners of any appointment have been made by the states of Connecticut, Maryland, South Carolina, or Georgia. That the express terms of the powers of your commissioners, supposing a deputation from all the states and having for object the trade and commerce of the United States, your commissioners did not conceive it advisable to proceed on the business of their mission under the circumstances of so partial and defective a representation. Deeply impressed, however, with the magnitude and importance of the object confined to them on this occasion, 
your commissioners cannot forbear to indulge an expression of their earnest and unanimous wish that speedily measures to be taken to effect a general meeting of the states in a future convention for the same and such other purposes as the situation of public affairs may be found to require. If in expressing this wish or in imitating any of other sentiment your commissioners should seem to exceed the strict bounds of their appointments, they entertained a full confidence that a conduct dictated by an anxiety for the welfare of the United States will not fail to receive an indulgent construction. In this persuasion, your commissioners submitted opinion that the ideas of extending the powers of their deputies to other objects than those of commerce, which has been appointed by the state of New Jersey, was an improvement on the original plan and will deserve to be incorporated into that of a further convention. They are the more naturally led to this conclusion, as in the course of their reflections on the subject, they have been induced to think that the power of regulating trade is of such comprehensive extent and will enter so far into the general system of the federal government that to give it efficacy and to obviate questions and doubts concerning its precise nature and limits may require a correspondent adjustment of other parts of the federal system. That there are important defects in the system of the federal government is acknowledged by the acts of all those states which have concurred in the present meeting, that the defects upon a closer examination may be found greater and more numerous than even these acts imply, is at least so far probable from the embarrassments which characterize the present state of our national affairs, foreign and domestic, as may reasonably be supposed to merit a deliberate and candid discussion in some mode, which will unite the sentiments and counsels of all the states. In the choice of the mode, your commissioners are of opinion that a convention of deputies from the different states for the special and sole purpose of entering into this investigation and digesting a plan for supplying such defects as may be discovered to exist will be entitled to a preference from considerations which will occur without being particularized. Your commissioners decline an enumeration of those national circumstances on which their opinion respecting the propriety of a future convention with more enlarged powers is founded, as it would be an useless intrusion of facts and observations, most of which have been frequently the subject of public discussion and none of which can have escaped the penetration of those to whom they would, in this instance, be addressed. They are, however, of a nature so serious as in the view of your commissioners to render the situation of the United States delicate and critical, calling for an exertion of the united virtue and wisdom of all the members of the Confederacy. Under this impression, your commissioners, with the most respectful deference, beg leave to suggest their unanimous conviction that it may be essentially tend to advice the interests of the Union if the states by whom they have been respectively delegated would themselves concur and use their endeavors to procure the concurrence of the other states in the appointment of commissioners to meet at Philadelphia on the second Monday in May next, to take into consideration the situation of the United States to devise such further provisions as shall appear to them necessary to render the Constitution of the Federal Government adequate to the exigencies of the Union, and to report such an act for the purpose to the United States in Congress assembled, as when agreed to by them and afterwards confirmed by the legislature of every state will effectively provide for the same. Though your commissioners could not with propriety address these observations and sentiments to any but the states they have the honor to represent, they have nevertheless concluded from the motives of respect to transmit copies 
of this report to the United States in Congress assembled and to the executives of the other states. Thank you for joining us for our primary source today on the appendix. We will see you in the stacks.